we are looking at thermal physics and the principles of thermometry that has to deal with how we measure temperature now temperature is used with symbol T and it's measured in degree Celsius with the symbol a small zero as a superscript and a capital C or it's measured in Kelvin with the symbol capital K now the kinetic theory of matter states that all matter is made up of smaller particles that are in continuous motion now the temperature of the body is mainly dependent on the kinetic energy of the particle such that if you add heat and increase the temperature the kinetic energy of the molecules increase and you see them start to um, move more rapidly and if you if you decrease the temperature you would also see a decrease in kinetic energy so you can see that the molecules are now slowing down so this is the kinetic theory of heat that the temperature of a body is determined by the average kinetic energy of the particles and that an increase in heat increases the energy of the particles now heat flows from a region of high temperature to a region of low temperature so if we have a body if we have a body and we add heat to let's say the left side of the body then heat will flow from the hotter region to the colder region now this is where we get into how exactly do we measure temperature how do we measure temperature really we have to look for a physical property that changes with temperature so for example if we add heat to a liquid or gas we know that the liquid or the gas expands we can use this expansion to determine what temperature is an example of a thermometer that uses the, the expansion of a liquid is the laboratory or the clinical thermometer another property that changes with temperature is the electrical resistance so the electrical resistance of this element here increases with temperature so that if you apply heat the hotter it gets the more electrical resistance um, will be in the circuit and you can see that the electrons are slowing down and you can also notice that the brightness of the bulb dim because there was more electrical resistance so you can use electrical resistance since it varies with temperature as a means to measure temperature an example of a thermometer that uses electrical resistance as a physical property is the electrical resistance thermometer another property that changes with temperature is color so for instance this piece of element is being heated and um, what happens when you heat element sometimes is that they begin to glow as they get hotter so they range the temperature changes from maybe like a yellow to an orange and then to a red and you can use this change in temperature compare it to a scale and then be able to well compare it to a reference scale and then be able to determine what temperature um, an object is an example of a thermometer that uses color as a physical property is the pyrometer okay finally if you have two different metals that are joined together at two different ends if there is a temperature difference between the two ends you will have a small current flowing in the circuit shown by this lighting bulb so you can use the current flowing in the circuit as your physical property to measure temperature and a thermometer that uses current as a physical property is the thermocouple so basically any property of a material which changes with temperature is called a thermometric property thermometric properties can be used to indicate or measure temperature now these are some factors to determine which thermometer is the best thermometer to use in your situation first you need to consider how small portable and convenient is the thermometer 
Can the thermometer give continuous reading and be connected to an electrically operated chat recorder or warning device? How expensive is the thermometer? Does the thermometer work over the range of temperatures required? Is the thermometer sensitive enough? Can it detect small enough changes of temperature? How quickly does the thermometer respond? So these are questions you should ask when you're choosing which is the best thermometer to use. Now, so let's say you have you found your physical property that your physical property that changes with temperature. The next thing you want to do to be able to actually create a thermometer is to find two points, two important points. The first one is called the lower fixed point. The lower fixed point is also referred to as the ice point. And what it is, is that it is the temperature of melting pure ice. So let's say you were calibrating a liquid in glass thermometer, something like the laboratory thermometer. You would, you would put that thermometer in your melting ice and you would record the length of the liquid. That would be your zero degree mark because the Z, because the fixed sorry because the lower fixed point is fixed at zero degree Celsius. After you find your lower fixed point, next we need to move on to finding the upper fixed point, which is also called the steam point. And the steam point is the temperature of the steam just above boiling water. So we would put our thermometer in the steam just above boiling water and then record the length of the column that column would represent our 100 degree mark because the steam point is fixed at 100 degrees celsius now after we have our two fixed points our lower fixed point and our upper fixed point the next thing that we need to do is just to divide the space in between these two points into equal parts so that we have a gradation and then we can use this thermometer to measure various distances then we can use this thermometer to measure various temperatures